from the station that's on your side. News 12, first at five, continues. This time, five months ago, these walkways were much emptier, but today, a sign of master's tradition is back. Patrons have returned to Augusta National. Spring is a time of beauty and new beginnings. Both could be found at Augusta National today. The course is back to its well-known springtime color. It is a beautiful view behind us and for a place known for tradition. Last year really was unusual. A November Masters, no patrons, but today we are inching back to normal tradition. And it feels so good. Laura Warren takes us to the course where signs of spring and big names already have people buzzing. It is springtime in Augusta and it really feels like it out here today. The course conditions are perfect. The azaleas are just about to pop over on Amen Corner. And aside from a sea of masks and shorter lines, it just about feels like everything's back to normal out here in Golf Sanctuary. Yes, losing Tiger Woods for this Masters has indeed been a disappointment for a lot of people, but luckily, so far, we're hearing that his recovery is going quite well. But let's talk about some of the other golfers who are here this week and plenty of the other topics that are going on with this year's 2021 Masters. And the number one thing that I'm actually talking about is the course and how the course is playing. In November, plenty of the players were talking about how the course played softly. This year, that's not the case. We've had wonderful weather, and so far that's been drying out the course and making it less forgiving. Yeah, Mike mentioned the sub-air system. It may be later in the week before we hear any of that sound out at Augusta National because we just had a, a dry start to a beautiful Masters week. Yeah, no complaints today, Riley. So many people excited just to get back to normal, to have somewhat of a normal Masters, and the weather today could not have been better. It really could not have. We saw high temperatures today in the 80s, abundant sunshine. The only thing you're really going to have to worry about the next couple of days out there is the sun. Just going to need your <laughs> sunscreen, sunglasses, yep. hat, all that. That's all you're going to have to prepare for, at least through Wednesday for us. Here's a current look down Washington Road. We're currently at 81 degrees still here in Augusta, so it has been a very warm afternoon, even for April standards, and we're expected to stay on the warmer side at least the next couple of days. We're currently at 82 still here in Augusta. Evanger at 80. Same thing in Aiken. Swainsboro just down 25. You're there at 78 degrees. A very comfortable evening up ahead for us. Those temperatures not really going to be dropping all too quickly. We should remain in the 60s and 70s before midnight tonight and then gradually just dropping our way close to 50 by early tomorrow morning. All right, thanks for that, Riley. New developments in the breaking news we brought you in the last hour or so. We have received the mugshot of the Augusta Waffle House shooting suspect, and take a good look. This is the latest shot of Andrew Gaines. Want to pull that up on the screen right now and show you. There you go. Andrew Gaines, the new mugshot has just been released. He was arrested, uh, the Richmond County Sheriff's Office says, in Columbia, South Carolina today. That shooting happened a couple of weeks ago by the Waffle House near the Southgate Shopping Center on Gordon Highway. Nicholas Wilson died in the parking lot there after the shooting. We are still working to learn more about how police caught up with Gaines today. A mother and father dead after a crash in Augusta over the weekend. A child in the hospital along with the driver of that car. The driver facing some charges. Uh, they're all from the same family. The wreck happening on Plantation Road in Augusta on Saturday. The driver, Francis Porter Jr., now faces a list of charges, including DUI and vehicular homicide. Our Sydney Heiberger spent the day learning more about the victims and what led up to the crash. The car was traveling east on Plantation Road, and you can see markings in the street and on the side of the road here show where Francis Porter Jr. allegedly lost control of the vehicle, swerving off the side and coming to a stop here at this tree, killing his long-term partner Stephanie and her father Steve. Porter told investigators a car traveling the opposite direction came into his lane and he swerved to avoid it. Deputies say he's at fault anyway. Porter's family tells me they were coming from his grandson's birthday party and he had a few beers. Porter and another one of his grandsons were taken to the hospital and deputies say they'll take Porter into custody once he's out. Two of his daughters tell me it's a complicated situation, but they hold no resentment towards their father. But that man's been in my life since I was 18 months old. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that he would have never intentionally hurt my mother, my grandfather, or my nephew. We didn't find much of a criminal history for Porter, but he does have some previous traffic charges, including an open container violation from 2019. We'll go into that tonight on News 12 at 6 o'clock.
Reporting in Hepzibah, Sydney Heiberger on your side. An update, Sydney. Police reports say the child was not in a car seat. Family tells us he broke his hip. An Aiken daycare worker arrested for reportedly punching a three-year-old while on the job. We are just learning about the charges Nicole Charleswell is facing after she was arrested March 26th. Police reports say she hit the child back in February at the South Aiken Baptist daycare. The daycare's director reported it to police, telling officers this wasn't the first time she's accused of assaulting a child at work. Reports say the school put her on trespass notice. Also this evening, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s family using his death anniversary as a time to speak out against Georgia's new voting law. The vigil was held yesterday at the King Center in Atlanta to commemorate the 53rd anniversary of Dr. King's assassination. Friends and family laid a wreath and recited prayers. They say they wanted to honor Dr. King's legacy by bringing light to what many are calling voter suppression. We had legislation to pass here in the state of Georgia. We're not tired, we're remaining vigilant, and we're gonna to continue to do what's necessary to make sure that that right to vote uh, is preserved. All this coming on the heels of the MLB moving this summer's All-Star Game out of Atlanta in response to the law. This week, a boycott is set to start against Coca-Cola, Delta Airlines, Home Depot, big employers in Georgia who activists say have not done enough to stand up against this legislation. Democrats are largely against the law, but some are on the fence when it comes to the boycott. Today, Atlanta Mayor Keish Lance Bottoms said the people of Georgia are the ones who actually get hurt when companies like MLB take business out of the peach state. I'm absolutely concerned that this will backfire. This is the first of likely many events that we will see pull from our city and from our state. And over the weekend, Governor Kemp spoke out against the Major League Baseball's decision, saying the league caved to fear from liberal activists. He says he will not back down from the fight. South Carolina's governor is appealing the pause on the fetal heartbeat law. That bill would prevent abortions once a heartbeat is detected, which happens as early as six weeks. South Carolina's House Speaker and the state's attorney general also joined in on the appeal. A judge blocked the law from taking effect last month. In Georgia and across the nation, folks were filling up airports more than any other time during the pandemic. From Thursday to Sunday, TSA screened more than 6 million passengers. This time last year, there were fewer than 365,000 people screened. In Atlanta, nearly one people flew through Hartsfield-Jackson and passengers say they noticed. I was disappointed by the actual airline, the flight. It was extremely crowded. Um, although they made every attempt to keep people distance. I think it was a little too crowded on the airplane. Sunday alone, Delta Airlines canceled nearly 100 flights, citing staffing issues. Now they're opening up middle seats to help fix the problem. Delta was the only airline that still had a middle seat policy. They weren't planning to have middle seats open until May. On Friday, we saw the most travelers since the pandemic started, with 1.5 million people flying nationwide. If you're in town looking for a COVID shot, University has a clinic this week holding a clinic on Wednesday at the University Hospital cafeteria. You do need to register. If you can't make it, they have clinics every week this month. AU hosting vaccine clinics this week as well. They're full now, but keep checking back, they say. You can also go to myvaccinegeorgia.com for options through the health department. We've put all these links for you on our app, WRDW app. Just go there and search vaccine clinic. One of the places the My Vaccine Georgia page will direct you is the mass vaccination site in Washington County. It is a drive through clinic at Word of Life Church out in Sandersville. Again, just sign up ahead of time online and you can get vaccinated without even leaving your car. More vaccines and places to get them coming to some of the smaller counties in South Carolina. Those of you in Allendale, Bamberg, Hampton counties, large vaccine sites are opening up this month. We have the info on the screen there, so you may want to snap a quick picture. No registration required for these. The 15th and 16th, there will be clinics in Allendale County. The 19th and 20th, they'll be in opening in Bamberg. Big changes near the North Augusta exit could get the go ahead in a couple of hours. Those changes are part of something called the West Martintown Corridor Study. The new traffic lights at the I-20 off ramp and at Bergen Road are just the tip of the iceberg. There are also plans for sidewalks, more turn lanes, even roundabouts. Council members are voting on whether or not to adopt all of this tonight. 
All of this work will take several years to complete. People are ready for exit one to be finished up soon. Heads up if you're heading for the Greenway in North Augusta this week. You might have to change up part of your route. Crews are doing some paving work there. This is the section of the Greenway from Riverview Park over to the Martintown Road Bridge. There are orange cones and yellow tape up as they do this paving work, and it's going to be going on through the 19th of this month. A California company bringing wine and hundreds of jobs to the Palmetto State. We have the scoop on where they plan to set up the shop, their East Coast hub, after a quick break. Riley. Rain chances are going to remain low at least through Wednesday, but going up as we head later into the week. We'll have a look at your first alert forecast next. On your side, this is News 12 at 11. Shouting in the streets, fist in the air, large groups of people sometimes blocking highways and clashing with police. All over the nation tonight, peaceful and violent protesters are taking to the streets demanding justice for George Floyd. He's the unarmed black man who died at the hands of police in Minneapolis this week. We're keeping an eye on several cities for you tonight. Going to start off with a live look at Minneapolis. The streets there, nothing like we've seen the last couple of nights. Tonight marks the first night of a citywide curfew there after heavy rioting there and and as you can see, things are much quieter. But we've been watching these fire crews. They're still busy putting out the hot spots left over from fires set last night during all the pa uh, pandemonium there. In other cities, the protests are going strong tonight. We're going to show you here on the left. We're going to show you New York. On the right, uh, Atlanta. New York City police uh, van set on fire there. Last night, 70 New York protesters were arrested. And as I mentioned, that camera on the ground there is Atlanta. There's been some trouble there tonight. A police car set on fire. Fire. Hundreds of protesters confronting officers outside CNN's headquarters, uh, actually breaking a window there, spray painting that building, and throwing bottles at officers near CNN. Protesters used barricades to break the windows of police cars in Atlanta, and according to at least one report, they made their way into the lobby at CNN. So trouble still there on the streets of Atlanta as we speak. So as you can see, his death is causing a ripple effect all across the country. One of the officers involved was charged today with murder, but as Michael George reports the protests are only getting louder. The Minnesota National Guard is now on patrol in Minneapolis alongside scores of law enforcement officers. And tomorrow, two protests are planned for the region. The first in Columbia at the state capitol. That'll be at noon. The other in Savannah, happening at Johnson Square. That'll be at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. More protests to tell you about tonight in Louisville, Kentucky, demanding justice in another case involving Brianna Taylor. The 26-year-old EMS worker was killed back in March. Police shot her in the home she shared with her boyfriend. Officers entered the home with a search warrant searching for illegal drugs. They say they announced themselves and were immediately met by gunfire. But attorneys for Taylor's family claim that's not true. A newly released 911 call shines a light on what happened there that night. 911, hey. Operator Harris, where is their emergency? I don't, I don't know what's happening. Somebody kicked in the door and shot my girlfriend. Can you check and see where she's been shot at? I can't go to somebody. Okay. Is, oh is she alert and able to talk to you? No, Bree. The FBI has opened an investigation there, and the Louisville Metro Police Department says it will require officers going forward to wear body cams. Across the nation and here at home, some people are questioning their faith in law enforcement. Officers here want you to know they are working hard to keep that relationship strong. They say it's about continued training, bias sensitivity, transparency, all of which our local agencies say can be improved. But the Burke County Sheriff says it has to be a nationwide effort. And it's... When I'm working hard in Burke County trying to build police community relations and you have something like this happen in Minnesota, it has reverberating effects around the country. We took a look at policies and training measures for each agency locally. Deputies are authorized to use force when their lives are threatened or when a subject resists. Still, local policy says this knee maneuver, like the one used in Minneapolis, is not permitted. A major bust today in Augusta with 23 people behind bars tonight. Deputies went to multiple locations today serving those warrants, most of them in the old Savannah Road area near MLK Junior Boulevard. Nearly 20 federal, state, and local agencies helping target the street gang known as OS. Investigators say they seized $27,000 in cash, 19 guns, 17 pounds of marijuana, 22 grams of MDMA, and cocaine. All of this following a two-year investigation.
This is News 12 at 6 o'clock. Spraying, scrubbing, and making downtown a better place. These guys are not city employees, but they are getting paid. Why a new group is footing the bill and picking up the slack downtown. But first up, we're learning more about a suspicious death in Aiken County. We told you here yesterday the police found a man's body decomposing and tied up in the cellar of a home in Jackson. Well, now we know a neighbor called in for a welfare check after telling officers he smelled an awful odor and hadn't seen anyone at the home for weeks. Will Volk live in the newsroom for us this evening. And Will, police found the body Sunday evening on 3rd Street in Jackson. You spoke with that chief today. What did he say? Richard, he says when they showed up, they found a body that was unrecognizable. He thinks it could have been there decomposing for three to four weeks. And he says this is something that doesn't happen in a town like this. And the Aiken County Sheriff's Office is investigating this, but they have no suspect at this time. Such an unusual case. Will Volk live in our newsroom. Thank you for that. It is a $240 million plan to tear down and rebuild a brand new James Brown Arena. Voters turned down that plan to have taxpayers pay for it. But today, city leaders are talking about new ways to play for a new arena. Our Kennedy Harris is live outside the JBA right now. Despite these stalled plans, shows are still happening out there. And tonight's a big one with the guitar pull kicking off in about an hour. Kennedy. That's right. The JBA will continue uh, welcoming crowds just like tonight. You can see people are lined up. So this arena isn't going anywhere anytime soon. The next task for the Coliseum Authority is figuring out how they will get the money for the new James Brown Arena plans. Well, so you heard it. The plan is to have a plan by the end of next year. Now, that plan could mean another bond referendum for voters to vote on. It just depends on what funding sources they decide. It is a long process and an expensive one, too, but the arena full of 6,000 people tonight. Yeah, and we can already hear the music happening behind her. Guitar pull out there. Kennedy, thanks for the live update. Filming for The Hill, the newest movie being produced in our area. It's officially underway, and you might see some familiar faces when the film comes out. Oh, yes, that is Tim Strong and our very own Dakota Watson. They are helping out as extras. Tim and Dakota aren't the only locals, though. Dozens of other people will serve as extras, too. The movie itself is about a former MLB player, Ricky Hill, and the challenges he faced to become a pro. We're I told, love it. Yeah, we're told that um, Tim and Dakota are coaches Okay. in the movie. I love we, it. You know what? People are getting paid to play baseball and coach. That's kind of fun. I know. And new movie in town. They look good. <laughs> they They're do. looking very sharp yep. out there. All right, let's have a live look outside. The sun has set just a little while ago over Grovetown. Beautiful sunset this evening after a spring-like day, really. Yeah, but one that started out cold. First alert, Chief Meteorologist Riley Hales taking a look at our temps. It was a cold morning, this, and we actually did have a number of frost advisories waking up in the mid and upper 30s across most of the region. This afternoon, we actually did warm up into the mid and low 70s. Currently speaking, though, we have a past sunset, still a beautiful look out of our western sky here from Grovetown. Temperatures have cooled off by about 10 degrees, though, over the last hour. Hour, so down to 60 and most spots should be down to the 50s within the next hour or so. So temperatures will be cooling off and uh, likely going to stay a little bit warmer than the colder starts we've seen so far this week. So temperatures currently in the 60s and 70s. Those will only be falling most likely to the 40s by the time we get to tomorrow morning. Low 40s is what we're anticipating away from the metro. Inside Bobby Jones will most likely stay in the upper 40s tonight. But a beautiful day in store again on Wednesday and take advantage of the beautiful weather. We are actually getting to to that time of year to where our fall colors really start to pop. Take a look at this. This is at Brick Pond Park in North Augusta. We are hitting the peak of these fall colors. Not going to last too much longer for us. We'll have a look at the forecast for the rest of the week in just about 10 minutes. Thanks, Riley. If you drive on Georgia Avenue in North Augusta, you might have seen this over the past couple of weeks. City crews have started clearing the old Flythe property. That's where they're going to build a new headquarters for public safety. That's uh, city leaders saying Dominion Energy has already cut power to all the poles out there. And city crews should be finished clearing the site sometime the first week of December. But tomorrow is an important day because you're going to have the chance to tell the city what you want to see there. It's just going to be an informal setting for citizens to come and look at the design pictures. We'll probably have sticky notes where they can write down, hey, I think this would look better here. This would look good. 
Uh, the public meeting tomorrow will be in the Palmetto Terrace Ballroom on the fourth floor of August North Augustus Municipal Building. That meeting starts at 6 o'clock. It will not be live streamed, but as the mayor just said, you can offer ideas on the renderings for the outside of the building. Designs for the inside, well, those have already been approved. If you've been downtown behind the cones and construction signs, you might have noticed these guys. Yeah, they are easy to spot rolling around green trash cans, wearing green polos and basically cleaning up Broad Street. What you might not know is who's footing the bill for this downtown cleanup. Celeste Springer live for us on Broad Street. So Celeste, how's it looking out there now? Well, out here outside Vintage Uli, I have been walking around Broad Street. I haven't been able to, of course, walk all the way down Broad Street, but here we haven't been able to find the typical amount of litter or cigarette butts. And here's the thing, though. I'm not footing the bill for this cleanup that's happening. You're not footing the bill. No taxpayers are paying for this. These superheroes don't wear capes, but green polos. And just like how Bruce Wayne footed the bill to clean up the streets of Gotham, this cleanup is paid for by private entrepreneurs. And I'm told they have enough commitments to pay for this project for up to three years. And after that, they say they look forward to working with the city to make sure that the cleanup just keeps happening. It is impressive. It is long overdue. And Celeste, thanks. If you're a business owner, you'd like to be part of this to contribute to this cleanup effort, uh, whether it's a big donation or a small one, we're going to have the information on how to do that at WRDW.com. And while we're on the topic of trash, check it out. At today's commission meeting, North Augusta Mayor Britton Williams handed over the Trash Bash trophy to Augusta Mayor Hardy Davis. Back in September, the two cities went head to head to see who could collect the most trash and bring out the most volunteers. Augusta ended up bringing 125 volunteers. That is a win-win on both sides of the river. The non-discrimination ordinance we were telling you about here yesterday did officially pass today. It allows you to file a complaint against a business with, that discriminates based on identities like race or religion, gender or disability. In a statement today, the mayor says, quoting here, the purpose of this ordinance is to provide a way for the, those most vulnerable in our community to have their voices heard and go through a deliberate process. We have an update to an I-Team investigation now into problem properties in Augusta. Azalea Park Apartments in commission today. It is the first time in more than six years code enforcement has taken action against an apartment's business license after repeat offenses like plumbing issues, no smoke detectors, or heating or air. The I-Team told us yesterday the property has racked up more than 200 code violations in three years. They have a lengthy list of problems they're working on now with code enforcement and agreed to share a copy of that with commission commissioners today. They will be on probation status through the end of this year as they work through those issues. Also in commission today, an update to the city's vaccination program, VaxUp Augusta. Take a look at your screen. This is vaccination numbers for Richmond County since mid-August. That's when the county started this initiative program. Just under 139,000 shots had been given out. About a month later, the county administered more than 26,000 more COVID shots. A month after that, more than 14,000 COVID shots. In total, right now in Richmond County, about 44% of the population has at least one dose. The cost of construction for a new reactor at Plant Vogel, those two new reactors that keeps just growing and getting more expensive. This is according to a new testimony now from a Georgia Power executive to state leaders. Last month, leaders were told units three and four would cost $9.2 billion. As of yesterday, that price went up $300,000. At this point, both reactors should be up and running by mid-2023. Riley. We did see warmer temperatures this afternoon actually reached the mid 70s, getting even warmer the next few days. Have a look at that roller coaster ride of fall just after the break. And the naked man only alive thanks to the kindness of 72 people he did not know. The way they saved him is a little unconventional, but you know what? You can do it too. Plus, if you're having trouble finding the perfect Christmas gift, you need to look no further than your neighborhood store. Go buy gifts from them. Just Go to the stores and check them out because they need all the help that they can get right now. One man bringing awareness to local businesses one bite at a time. Buenas tardes, estas son las noticias del día. Hoy es jueves 14 de mayo y yo soy Anelis Villalta. 
solo nueve casos nuevos en nuestros hospitales locales hoy significa que solo hemos visto 51 casos nuevos desde el lunes. En total, EU Health ha tenido 50, 537 pruebas positivas. Hay 238 en University Hospital, 48 en Doctors Hospital, 29 en Aiken Regional y 26 en el Charlie Norwood Hospital de Veteranos. Los números muestran que los casos en nuestra área están nivelando, significando que no hemos visto un gran salto en casos en unas cuantas semanas. A veces vemos casos bajando cada día, otras veces es un aumento pequeño. En todos los casos de COVID encontramos que desde ayer solo habían 50, 52 personas hospitalizadas. Eso es de las más de 800 casos que acabamos de mencionar. Georgia levantó los criterios para hacerse pruebas y ahora cualquiera puede hacérselo, pero aún con el aumento de las pruebas no hay una subida rápida en casos positivos. Todavía los expertos locales en Augusta advierten que es demasiado temprano para celebrar. There is always what's called a testing bias, or said the other way, 100% of the people you don't test are negative. People should remain cautious just because we haven't seen a big jump in cases with people being less socially distanced doesn't mean that we should throw caution to the wind. Mañana los bomberos de Augusta van a dar pruebas del coronavirus gratis. Van a estar en la escuela primaria de Lamar Millage en Eve Street este viernes. Es desde las 10 de la mañana hasta las 2 de la tarde. No hace falta registrarse, pero si pueden, llamen al 311. Si han esperado para pasar tiempo al aire libre, hay buenas noticias. Los campamentos y las rampas para barcos alrededor de Lake Thurman van a abrir pronto. Las, las rampas para barcos abren mañana, los campamentos abren el lunes, pero hay algunas nuevas reglas. Grupos y campamentos se limitarán a 10 personas, también los patios de juegos, las playas, los refugios y los estantes para chalecos de salvavidas todavía están cerrados. Eso es todo por las noticias del día. Los vemos mañana.